Okay. We'll come back to you, Alex. Jeff Shogel. Thanks. I have a question, and it's difficult, but I hope you can entertain it. Uh, according to Politico, the U.S. knew where the attack would, or roughly where the attack would take place on Thursday and when it would attack, or when it would take place. Why were there U.S. troops at that gate at that time? Jeff, um, what I can tell you is that uh, we have been monitoring as close as we can intelligence that uh, led us to believe uh, that we were in a very dynamic and, in, in some cases, specific uh, threat environment, um, uh, number one. Number two, uh, as General McKenzie said, we're going we're gonna to investigate. We're going to get to the bottom uh, of what happened last Thursday. Uh, 13 precious lives were lost. We're going to take that seriously, and we're going to, and we're not going to investigate it in public. Uh, number three, I am absolutely not going to speak uh, to uh, a, a, a press story that was informed by the unlawful disclosure of classified information uh, and sensitive deliberations here at the Pentagon. Just not going to do it. Yeah. Bye. -bye. John, uh, give him being conducted at a uh, residential area, this strike, drone strike, was the collateral damage of this strike was almost a certainty. So was that the only option you guys used? Just a question to both of you. Was there any other option to, to stop that bomb-laden uh, vehicle? Uh, I'll let the general, uh, I'll ask the general to provide context. Uh, only thing I would say is that and we've used the word dynamic a lot, and, and I know that sounds like Pentagon speak, and, uh, but that's really how you, the best way to describe the threats we're facing, dynamic, moving, fluid, quick, uh, and because that's how ISIS-K operates. Um, and we have to try to be as quick and as nimble as they are. Um, and when you have what we believe to be an imminent threat, and we believe this to be an imminent threat, we took the action that we believe was was the most necessary at the best opportunity to thwart that attack. Commanders uh, will always minimize uh, collateral damage. That is uh, one of the key tenets of of what we how we operate. In, in this case, just like uh, Mr. Kirby said, uh, that this strike prevented a high-profile attack uh, against both, you know, coalition and U.S. forces and uh, other Afghan civilians. And so, uh, as we looked at the information uh, that we had during the time of the strike, we took all those measures in place, and the decision was made to strike and thwart that, uh, that attack. And also on the, uh, on the five rockets, so the, the U.S. Um, force protection measures engaged those rockets, and then apparently they, they hit one of them, or you didn't engage the other ones? You just wanted to engage that specific fourth one. Yeah, as we look at, just going back, uh, the force protection CRAM did work. It did engage and uh, had effect on the, the one, and then one did land in, a, uh, in an area, and it uh, was not effective. So, so it didn't, it didn't, like, you didn't intercept that one, right? That's that correct. We intercepted one, and it was effective. Okay. The CRAM was effective. Uh, Therese. Good morning, John. I just need to clarify the numbers you stated earlier. Of the 122,000, is the 5,400 a part of that number of Americans evacuated, or is that this a separate number from the 122,000 plus evacuated uh, over the course of this uh, operation, going back to late July when we started moving SIV applicants back home, and then when you add in the that since then, yes, 5,400 is included in the 122,000. Okay, thank you. Uh, of course, I understand you can't give us uh, an update on the number of troops on the ground, but are you still confident that all the troops will be out by the deadline? And also, if you can clarify when the deadline will come into effect, like Kabul time, August, it's, it's, it's a little uh, bit complicated. No, no, I, I, fair. For, for, uh, answer to your first question is yes, and the answer to your second question is I'm not going to get into it. Jenny. Thank you, John. Um, if the uh, ISK terrorists continues terrorism in Afghanistan, 
even after the withdrawal of U.S. troops on the 31st, will the United States get involved in the war on terror again? Well, I, I think I'd like to go back to what I said before uh, to, to Courtney. Um, the, the, the president's made it clear that our, our combat mission, our, the, the war we have been fighting in Afghanistan, that, that's going to end. And it's going to end very soon here. But what's not going to end is our commitment, especially here at the Defense Department, to protect the American people uh, from, from threats and particularly from any terrorist threat that could emanate from Afghanistan again. Um, and as I said to, to my the previous answer, you, you can see in just the last 24, 36 hours that we do have an effective over-the-horizon counterterrorism capability. We've employed it now twice. And that capability will, will remain. And uh, obviously, we're not going to detail what it looks like on any given day against any particular threat, but we're going to maintain that capability to protect the American people from threats that could emanate from Afghanistan. And it's also important to remember that the counterterrorism threat isn't just in Afghanistan. Uh, it, it's in the Levant. It's in North Africa. I mean, and, we, and you guys have all seen that. And we are going to still maintain uh, th that ability to, to thwart those threats as best we can. And, and, and over the horizon is not something new to us either. I mean, we're, we, we've been doing it for a long time in, in places outside Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Uh, that over horizon um, ability for strike and for ISR is that still is that still coming from Gulf bases or are you making progress with regional partners uh, for that over horizon? It comes from over the horizon, Abraham, and I'm not going to go into more detail on that. It's being made with those negotiations. We continue to have discussions with uh, uh, neighboring nations about uh, about possibilities. I don't have anything to announce today. Thank Alex, uh, let me come back to you. Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me, John? I got you. Yeah, uh, going back to the strike, um, the, the drone strike on the vehicle, um, you know, I, I want to revisit the, the evidence you used. Um, you know, it seems like verification that it was a legitimate target came from the secondary explosion, though uh, an ordnance expert and uh, trained EOD tech uh, told me, you know, accepting the wire photos, publicly available photos of the scene show, you know, a, a lack of soot on the walls, so, uh, you know, relatively little amount of shrapnel. There's a tree that was knocked down that with the foliage still intact. So, you know, after viewing these things, you know, what is your, do you still stand by with a high degree of confidence that there was a significant explosion and not something like, uh, you know, a gas tank explosion or something like that, that may misdirect the, uh, the evidence of a big secondary explosion? No. We know that, uh, as I said earlier, there was a secondary explosion uh, that assessed that, uh, what was uh, there uh, was going to be used in a high-profile attack. Uh, I don't have details on the, you know, the information that you're just saying there, but uh, our intelligence experts and the CENTCOM will continue uh, to assess uh, the post-strike uh, activities. Okay, a couple more on back there. Uh, does the coordination with Taliban apply to the final phases of the withdrawal? I mean, uh, will they take over the airport before you leave? Uh, how will you ensure the protection of your troops? Uh, will you depend on your capabilities? How the outcome would look like, the last flight? Now, there's a lot there. Um, as I said to Louis, um, we have been in communication with the Taliban about uh, about these final days um, uh, so that we can make sure that there's no miscalculation, no misunderstanding. Our goal is to complete this retrograde and to wrap up evacuation operations as safely and as orderly as we can. Obviously, I'm not going to get into the details of either the conversations we're having or our processes and procedures. Uh, as we have seen all too uh, vividly in the last day, the the, the threat remains high and it remains real. So what I can assure you is that, uh, that General McKenzie and Admiral Vasely, uh, General Donahue there uh, on the ground, uh, they have worked out uh, a very carefully coordinated uh, method of, of safely completing uh, this retrograde. And uh, that's about as far as I, I think I can go. As for the airport, uh, the airport will 
remain operational uh, through uh, our final flights. Um, what it looks like after we are gone, um, I, I would just point you to what the Secretary of State said, that the international community, there's a couple of countries that have talked about um, uh, being able to come up with an arrangement to, to keep it operational for commercial air traffic in coordination with the Taliban. I'll let those countries speak for their efforts with the Taliban. That would not be a U.S. military function. It would not be a U.S. military responsibility once we have completed the retrograde and, and we are no longer there. Just a couple more. Yeah, Megan. The ratio of flights to people getting out has gotten pretty high. Is that only indicative of fewer people coming onto the airport, or is that also a mix of flights filling up with uh, equipment and supplies heading out? Yeah, like, uh, so we're not going to get into details of load plans, uh, but uh, obviously we are reaching uh, the end of our uh, prescribed mission. So. Uh, commanders are inflowing and outflowing those requirements needed to, to complete the mission. And are there still strike aircraft flying overhead, uh, keeping out in case something's going on near the airport while everyone's getting on the planes? Assets, as we talked about, assets available. We're not going to get into the details of what's flying and what there is, but the commanders that are fulfilling this last part of this mission have all the assets uh, they need. Uh, in the air and on the ground and where they're at to complete the mission safely. Two weeks ago, guys the guys are, non combatant evacuation operations are dangerous, mm -hmm. period. Um, the end of them, particularly one in, that, in, in an environment that we can't uh, consider, clearly cannot consider permissive, uh, are particularly dangerous. And the, the commanders on the ground have the resources they need to enact uh, appropriate force protection. What is more dangerous now about saying there are F-18s and Reapers flying over than there was two weeks ago? When it's, you guys not, it's, not a, it's not. It's not. that we're. It's not that we're not saying more specific because, uh, uh, for one reason or another, it's it's that we are in a particularly dangerous time now, Megan. Uh, and not that it hasn't always been dangerous, but it is particularly dangerous now, and we're just not going to detail every aspect of our force protection measures in public while we still have uh, troops in harm's way and we're still trying to get uh, the people out of Afghanistan. There will be a time to talk about all that. It's just not today. One more quick question. Yeah, Jen. Um, there's an American hostage still being held by the Taliban. Has the Taliban agreed to release Mark Freericks before the U.S. leaves? Does the U.S. have any plans to leave without this American hostage? Well, without getting into specifics, Jen, um, I can tell you that, uh, that we, we share the entire government's uh, concerns over Mr. Freericks and uh, our strong desire to see him returned home to his family where he belongs. Uh, and there has been a concerted effort over many, many months uh, to try to achieve that outcome. And regardless of uh, what we do over the next day or so, uh, we will remain, all of us will remain focused uh, on returning him safely to his family. That's not going to, that's not going to change one way or the other. Okay, listen, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks very much. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.